Gord, just as a, an opening, yes. tell me what makes Enniskillen or Fermanagh in general a great place to live. Well, it's just the general surroundings here in, in, in Fermanagh, as I say, uh, and, and Enniskillen particularly. Um, Enniskillen being the only island town in, in Ireland as such, and uh, it's just, just the uh, views of the lake and, and just the, uh, the atmosphere uh, and the views of the castle and uh, and you do absorb, uh, I've been here all my life, and uh, you do absorb the history of the town and a day like today, uh, and you can't see anything, <laughs> but because this is an oral thing, uh, but the sun is shining and... Um, I would be biased, I suppose, there's nothing like in a skillet on a lovely sunny day like this. Yeah. But really, I'm so proud to be from here. And um, as I say, uh, it's just uh, um, a special place to me. And uh, there are many other lovely places on this island of Ireland too, but uh, I have a real soft spot for my hometown. <laughs> and you were actually born on the island. That's right, yes. I was born in uh, number, number three, Wellington Place. At the bottom of Wesley Street, uh, in 1951, second of July to be exact. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and then I lived there for what um, uh, three years. I can't remember a lot about it because we then we went to my present address, which is uh, uh, 66 Slagger Road, uh, uh, just about a mile from the centre of Inniskillen, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I've never, I've always lived here and uh, I have travelled quite a bit certainly outside Inniskillen but uh, 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 my roots are firmly here in Inniskillen. And, and, uh, and the house in Wellington Place, would you remember? Would you uh, be able uh, to describe not a lot it? Of it? Yes, I remember, uh, you know, because it, it, I think they were demolished uh, sometime in the early 70s and I do remember, as I say, um, on my bicycle and different things cycling past when they were still there and I remember you know it, they were like the Georgian houses uh, 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 out uh, at Wilby Place they were similar to that and they had I think they had about four steps up on those railings each side and then you had your big uh, 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 I don't remember that the colour of the doors probably changed over the years but it did have a, a brass knocker on it mm. and it had uh, a skylight mm. up above as well I remember one uh, time uh, we went, uh, uh, it shows you how the community was at that time, uh, we went to Bundorn for the day, I don't know, anyway, and, and when we got back, the hall door was lying open <laughs> all the time, but the way things were then, you know, there was nothing touched, there was nothing missing, and, and uh, you know, and I think someone said to my mum, oh, you left the door open, but sure, it was a lovely day, it was all right, <laughs> and yeah. that was it. You know, it's, um, it was still probably the same out in some of the rural areas, you know, where, where, where doors are not locked and things like that. But at that time, there were never any doors locked or anything. Yeah. Everything uh, was open. And, and, and uh, <coughs> as I say, uh, 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 burglaries and break-ins were basically unheard of. Yeah. yeah they just didn't happen. I think things have changed, uh, unfortunately, you know, for the worse in that respect. But... Anyway, um, so you lived there for three years. Three years, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, and just, what was the reason for moving? Yes, well, I think then uh, um, I, uh, well, mum and dad, you see, uh, uh, my sister was born in 1948. So then uh, I think then they decided they had been obviously looking for some other property, and it wasn't a, a particular reason, but this different houses came on the market and um, uh, decided to, to move out to Sligo Road. The dad would have had a car at that time. So, uh, you know, in, in the early 50s, that a lot of people around the local part of the town maybe didn't have cars. It was, it was either one you might have a motorbike or something, or a bicycle. Mm -hmm. But then your the houses in Wellington Place were de demolished? Yes, the wire. What year was that? I, I, I think it was about the early 70s. Sometime, I, I think it was 71 or 2, approximately, because I left school in 1969, and I think it was, wasn't was too long after that that they were demolished. Uh, as, I said, it's, uh, as I said before, uh, but after that, a lot of the old 
parts of Inniskillen were demolished and it became it turned into a car park, <laughs> that sort of thing. So um, maybe in hindsight, um, it's just whatever the finances from the local council or whatever, or the people who owned the houses uh, or the last occupants, um, the finances weren't there maybe to, to keep them maintained and things it would have been lovely to have that, uh, that. but then with when the the new uh, the second bridge the iron bridge was opened um now let us see my yeah it's about late 70s early 80s i think approximately so um whether those houses when that road had to be widened and everything whether that would have caused a problem mm -hmm. but i i think it was Probably um, uh, eight and nine years after that, that the I'm, I'm sure maybe the plans had been already drawn up uh, by the, the, the council and whatever, and uh, it, this is maybe one of the reasons why they were demolished and they couldn't, um, uh, as I say, uh, build the bridge and the houses would have been uh, in the way, so to speak. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was life like growing up in Enniskillen? Oh, it, it, it was, yeah, it, it was uh, in the early days, you know, and we went out uh, to Sligo Road, we were out, I think, about Christmas time, and it was snowing, I think, <laughs> I think my mum told me, and uh, uh, as I say, um, I remember the, the, the street lighting, you know, was, was, was uh, there was a big, uh, about every, I suppose, about 150 yards or so, there was a, uh, pole and there would be basically just uh, a, a sort of a lantern and it had a big 250 watt bulb in it just and that's what the lighting was you know so it, it was dim enough during the and if there's a kind of foggy night <laughs> you couldn't see anything I remember uh, walking into town sometimes like that but uh, yeah um, so as I say uh, there was a good um, those houses that we were living in, they were built just after the war. Some of them were, and some of them were pre-war. There was a guy called Jack Smith. His name was, he was a local contractor here. And what they did in those days, they um, uh, they built the houses and then they lived in them themselves for about 18 months and then they would sell them on. So he, he, he built uh, the house I'm in now and the bungalow to the left and then they were semi-detached on the other side. That were all built by Jack Smith, and then he uh, became Clocker Works, I think, and when uh, St Joseph's School, I think, uh, was built, he was, and then they moved then eventually to, to Belfast. They lived uh, on the Andersonstown Road, and uh, they have all passed on now. But um, there would be some Smiths. Um, I think they're all mostly in Belfast, so we have really lost uh, contact with them over okay. the years, you know, but um, no, there was a close uh, community uh, out there um, on the Sligo Road, and then there was houses up uh, another 100 yards or 200 yards up further out towards the countryside, uh, where um, little cottages, there were ex-servicemen's cottages, they, they, they were there, and um, <clears throat> Some of those were being ex-military people from the Second World War and stuff. There was a uh, one of them uh, when I would I would have been seven or eight. And Mr. Condale, his name was, and they had a lovely uh, uh, garden and uh, vegetable garden. And I used to be sent over to get different pieces of vegetables or whatever it was, or potatoes or whatever, uh, and carrots and parsnips. He used to grow, and he was an ex-naval man. Uh, it was, yes, even th at that time he would have been, uh, when I was at 58, 59, he would have been uh, 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 in his late 70s, early 80s. So I think he, he, he was in the First World War and the Navy. Um, uh, I think um, he might have, there was a, a very famous big battle there, the Battle of Jutland. I, I think my dad told me he might have been involved in that. I'm not really sure if that's totally correct. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have any family that lived with them, I don't think. I, I can't remember any sons and daughters. And uh, as I say, it's an unusual name. It's not a Fermanagh name. Uh, uh, um, 
where they originally came from, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. But um, and then there was McNulty's left up. Uh, that was the, the bicycle shop in Skillen. Brian, Brian still lives there, so he does. Um, and then there's Anne, I think. She has down in the butter market. She does ceramics and stuff. Mm-hmm. And people like that. But then either side of that, um, there's been an awful lot of people over the you know the last 25 years that there's been an end of a generation. My parents' generation basically uh, uh, all passed on now, and then it's, it's my generation, and um, then uh, a lot of the bungalows on the town side of me. Uh, 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 this last sort of twenty five years uh, have uh, been occupied, uh, rented out to a lot of um, when things changed in Europe, uh, to Central Europeans and things like that. As I said, then I le- learned to ride the bicycle. Uh, 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 there was a little um, when they changed the road a bit further outside the thirty mile limit. There was a, still is a, way, a part of an old road, and I learned to ride the bicycle there. And, and Dad used to and sort of I'd get on the bicycle, and then he pushed me to get going. You see, I keep pedaling. <laughs> you see, and that stop there, whoop, <laughs> fall off, you know. But uh, we did that. He he was a great man for the bicycle. He had a big twenty eight inch frame uh, bicycle, uh, and and. Um, as I mentioned maybe before, when I was at the, the Jones Memorial School, he had a little saddle and he put it on the bar and there was two little stirrups and I just put my feet in there. And he would, uh, I'd get out on the bus and he'd come and collect me, you know, on a good day in the summer, whatever. And uh, so um, I had a wee three-wheeler before I learned to have a two, the, 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 and I should have said that before, the two-wheeler. And uh, I used to go out with him in a wee three-wheeler. I think one time we went away out as far as the five points on the three wheeler, of course there wasn't the traffic in, in the fifties as there is now, and and and, and right, I don't know, we've done eight or ten miles. I would have been about eight or something, and then but then I, I was about seven or eight then that I got a nice wee red bicycle, mm-hmm. and I learned to ride that, and um, and then in later stages then I um, when I especially when last year I was in the model school, I um, went to uh, school on the bicycle, uh, uh, then and, and then the high school. I, I did on, on, on the bicycle. Well, away from work, um, being born on the island and growing up in Enniskillen, mm-hmm. would you say that you have a close association with the river and the loch? Aye, well, uh, really, we, I, I, my family weren't a boating family. Uh, I would have had friends uh, uh, over the time that would have, um, you know, uh, I would have gone out in some cabin cruisers and stuff like that and down the lake. But well, I, I, I used to fish a little bit. When I was more a schoolboy, before I started playing golf and stuff like that, I would have fished down behind, uh, or I live in the Sligo Road, uh, where the Silas goes into the uh, into the into the lock. Um, you were going up up through Old Rishari, and there's an old graveyard up there. You go through that, and and then you go down sort of down uh, over a little hill, and then you see where the Silas goes into the into the lock there, and that was a good place to fish. We used to get perch and bream and, 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 and uh, the odd pike as well. I remember one time going just down, further down the Silas, out the Derry and Road, and I was fishing there, and um, I just had the, the wee rod and it was a wee red and white uh, uh, um, float, you say, and next minute this big splash, whoosh, and a big pike. I had caught a wee perch and it was just taking it up and it I would say that fish would Pike was about twenty pounds. Splash! Jump back, my God, heaven's sake! Here, mm-hmm. what was that? <laughs> You're frightening the life out of me. Big pike, bang! But anyway, that's uh, that's so. Uh, um, so um, really, uh, as I say, after that sort of. Um, Did you swim in the river? Uh, no, I was never. My sister, we were uh, used to be a major wheeler at, at the Victoria Pool. And I wanted three or four times, so I was never that happy in the water. And I learned to swim my sister. I remember being out when I was, yes, we would have been maybe just at the Sligo Road. And because my mum, her, her dad, or Sandy, Sandy Parker, uh, he had uh, some farms land that he would have passed away at that time. Uh, it would have been out um, in Banalek. And I remember being on the shore, it's in Rustone out there, and I sort of fell over one time and my head went under the water. 
and it scared me. And I don't know, that's always been stayed with me. And I, that's why I was never a, 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 a swimmer as such. And but you mentioned Major Wheeler. Did did yeah. you swim at the Yes, yes, I did, yes. He taught me a bit. I, I was at it, but, you know, I still, uh, and Edna learned to swim. It wouldn't have been a great swimmer, but she did. Uh, but then I sort of drifted away from it, and I just said to Mom or Dad or whatever, you know, I don't really enjoy this, you know, sort of thing. So I did, but I wasn't, it wasn't uh, pursued, and, and that was it. Uh, uh, but um, I, I still, uh, as I say, we, we have a great area here with, with, with the water and everything, and it's, uh, it's a paradise for um, people who, who, who love boating and fishing. But that, that wasn't in my family as such, the boating end, you know, sort of thing. Uh, uh, you know, but um, uh, it's um, that part of of the local culture. Probably, I wasn't uh, really. Uh, uh, I know certainly down the old Dardanelle streets, down on Strand Street. That's where all the the, the boat builders all lived down there, and, and people who, who, who built all the boats and maintained them and everything. And uh, uh, but um, that it, it it probably it goes in families that if you were actually living on the town and you lived in, 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 in the old Dardanelles and stuff there, uh, an awful lot of people uh, in those little houses, especially down towards Strand Street, all had a wee rowing boat of their own mm -hmm. and, and, and would have been. And then, of course, then the um, the launch that I remember then was called the Endeavour. The Endeavour, yes. Uh, uh, that was a pleasure cruiser that took people out on the lake, yes. So I, I was on that a number of times. Um, yeah, uh, now, um, my memory's failing me here. Uh, there was a family that ran it um, that, uh, as such uh, for quite a number of years. And I think then it, it was sold. And then after that, then um, uh, he had a, a small restaurant and a bakery, uh, Willie Wilson. He, 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 he bought this one which is still on the lake, the Kestrel, and it took over from, from the Endeavour. And uh, as I say, uh, so that's, that's my first memories of a trip on the lake would have been on the Endeavour. Um, I, 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 it'll come back to me with that name, but I just can't recall it at the moment. But I, if people in, in, in the town will know, of my age group, would, would know the people that, that, that ran the Endeavour. Uh, um, one of them used to work out at Silver Hill when I was there for a time in the DUE centre. But anyway, uh, as I say, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy the lake, but I'm not a boating enthusiast, yeah. put it that way. But I, I, I do uh, uh, appreciate the people that really enjoy it. Well, earlier you mentioned there being a real sense of community back in the those days. Yes, there so was. Would you have keeled in local houses? I, uh, my dad, you see, came from that tradition, uh, uh, keeling, and especially when we, uh, when we were, well, maybe, yes, here in Fermanagh as well, uh, my cousins uh, on my mother's side, uh, uh, the Weirs out of Dramard, um, my dad was, uh, was a keen bowler, and uh, even when the boat used to be uh, out there uh, at, at Tamla, and um, uh, Derry Bullen, Guy Bowen was a, a, he used to play there, and then he used to play in different places around Cedar and here and down at the Forum. So he, he, he was a great man, even without that. He got learned how to, he, he knew a lot of people through the bowling. And oh, so I must go out and see Mrs. So and so tonight. And then uh, he used to go out to, they had a lot, they had raspberry canes, uh, the waiters, uh, out, out, they had the guest house there at Dramard now, and, and at certain times, and then they had plum trees and stuff. And, and, and Iris uh, Weir and uh, my dad, you know, he, he'd go out, <laughs> he'd, come out, he'd bring out about half a dozen empty jam jars, you know. <laughs> you can't be doing that. Oh, there's just plenty of stuff there here, you know. And then uh, I'd be out in a couple of weeks. Oh, certainly you will be picking those now and I'd make you some jam and stuff like that. Uh, so he, he used to, 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 the Weirs were great people for, for uh, Ivan Weir, was a great man for, for, uh, 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 Kaylian and, and love people coming in and, and having a chat about things and so forth. Uh, so uh, I would have gone with mum and dad sometimes to um, uh, and I to, to bow as well. Yes, the, on our mum's side, the, uh, um, uh, the air ones there, bow cross, and we used to go out. Uh, 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 
they had a farm there, and, and I was as well. They had they had a geese and had a gander. And the gander, you see, with the, with the, the other females, or whatever. And if you go on too close, they would sort of spit mm. at you, you know. And, and I, used, I used to come running in, and I said, Mama, that, that, that big, big goose is chasing me. <laughs> Don't like it, you know. <laughs> that was it. But again, they, they had, uh, they used to rear hens, and, and the, the, the wee, uh, when they used to hatch out, they were, they, they were in sort of a, a wee room next to their kitchen, mm. and, and there was a sort of a wee gas light over them. And uh, they were all reared, and they used to go in there, and I used to see there all these wee bundles of fluff running about, you know. And uh, so when we used to come out, I remember uh, it was um, um, they would get, I would get maybe a wee orange or something, and my sister and I, and then uh, uh, old Aunt Ellie used to bring out a wee bottle of port, and you got uh, they got a wee measure of port and an arrowroot biscuit, you got that with it, and. Uh, so again, then we used to go out sometimes uh, 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 during the summer and school holidays, and we'd have have our tea there. And then there was a nice the, the wee Church of Ireland boat church was up the road, and sometimes we used to go to the Harvest Thanksgiving and stuff like that. And, and the church was all beautifully decorated. And again, the the bow community still would be very close. I know quite a number of people who live out there, and um, it, it's it's one of the very traditional areas still in Fermanagh. Uh, uh, um, you know, it's uh, has a lot of uh, history. Well, where the, the caves are there and, and things like that, and then there's the waterfall and Silas River right, rises up there. And um, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it would have been one I think of the last um, uh, the uh, the Corn Creek. I think up on the top of of Bowl, the, the bars of Bowl used to call it. It it was very uh, it's quite rough land and uh, not a lot of agriculture there, so I don't think if there's any still there. But I remember as a little boy on the Sligo Road when we went out there in the summer, and the corn creek would go eh, 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 the whole night long, and then you see once they started making the silage and stuff because the the corn creek nests in the ground, and uh, they, they they just eventually disappeared. But I used to go into my mum and dad's room. I said, I can't s sleep with that cornflake. I used to call it a cornflake. <laughs> yes. So that's the, you know, the way it was. But um, no, you see, you only, you only go, uh, even now, once you go about two and a half, three miles out of town, you're straight into the countryside. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you were blessed with that. Uh, island town is always difficult for communications, certainly. Um, with now the, the level of traffic, but in the old days, uh, you know, it it was um, the more affluent people or, or professional people that had cars, or, or, and then as time went on, it became more affordable. But the volume of traffic was, was, was small. I remember one incident uh, uh, in the Sligo Road, and um, I had the tricycle we talked about earlier, and the bread man came round the people next door to us and uh, I used to go down and sometimes they, they would try to give you a wee bun or something but uh, that house the next one over from us there was a slight gradient on, on, on their path and I was going down the tricycle and whatever the bun or was a wee bar or something got caught in the brake and I pulled it you see and, and, and it didn't stop and I went right across the road and bumped on the other side of it and if it had happened now, I don't think I would have been here. But the mm -hmm. volume of traffic, you know, in, in the mid-50s was small. Mm -hmm. I remember that. It just came back to me there. 